are here with a little unboxing video. Just like I promised of the Pocket Pack Old Timers 1928 Mercedes Benz SSK. This is a tiny little 143rd scale kit. I mean, look at the size of this box. So uh, we're going to open up and see what's inside. Let's take a look see here. This is pretty cool. I've never actually seen one of these kits before. Now, as you can see, this thing is neat. looks like it's never been opened up. I don't know. It's stapled shut here. So uh, let's say open it up and take a look. Kind of figure out when these kits were made. I don't really have a date on it. This is our entire instruction sheet. It's one simple picture showing how the parts go together. All parts shown in a diagram are use a good model kit cement for best results. Smooth all sharp edges with a model knife, wire cutter. Do not use too much glue in the wheel parts of the wheel will not turn. <laughs> Very simple. So let's take a look at what we have in the pack. We get one, two, I'm going to assume that was part of that tree. And that's pretty much it. Hmm. All right. Let's take a nice close-up look at this. Here we have our front seats, our rear seats. Here's our grill. I have to find out whether that was chrome or not. Not really sure what this is. We have pins here, which I'm assuming are for the wheels. Here's our Tiny little steering wheel. That's really cute. There's an exhaust manifold and a muffler. Our window. Four tires. Wheels and tires are all one part. It's got a bit of flash on it. Very simple. Let's take a look at the body, see what we have here. Well, we can see that the body. Not a lot of detail really molded into it. Apparently there are some sort of slats here etched into the hood. Here as well. I'm sure those are supposed to be some kind of louvers. Very, very, very shallow molding. I don't see any engraving work for the wheel, I mean for the doors. So we may be trying a little bit of adding detail work to this thing. Or we may just build it as is. I mean, it is kind of cool for what it is. It's apparently the chassis and the body. It looks pretty good. Okay, here we have our fenders with the molded in running boards here that just step boards to get into the car. A little bit of detail there. Quite a bit of flash that I am going to have to get rid of. And here we have our suspension assembly. Our leaf springs, part of the frame. Again, very, very simple kit. I couldn't see this thing taking more than 10 to 15 minutes to put together. So this is going to be fun to paint up. And really uh, try and dress it up a little bit. You can see on the box here it shows the fenders are in metallic color. Along with the grill work, it's all chromed out. Hmm. So there'll be a little bit of metal work on here. So it should be a fun little kit. We're going to see how nice we can make this thing. But that's pretty much all there is. There's not a lot to this thing. Which at 143rd scale, really wouldn't expect there to be. So, this is going to be a very quick build that will end up being more all out paint work than anything else. Let's give one last look at this instruction sheet. Pretty much tells you all you need to know.
Oh, that's what that round, those round tubes are. That's part of the chassis. Okay, very neat. Will be part of my Mercedes Benz tribute build. Now, this is one kit that's very easy to get back into the box. <laughs> Alright, so that's our unboxing of the Pocket Pack Old Timers 1928 Mercedes Benz SSK. Cool little build. Just to use as a pilot cleanser. Alright, now let's take a look at something else that I got that's really cool. Okay, this is one from Atlantis. It's a two pack, two complete kits in here the Alfa Romeo and uh, Lago Taubuck race cars. It's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty neat. I, this is one of those kits that I saw in the hobby shop for a very long time, and I never picked it up. But it kept calling my name every time I went in there. So uh, let's open her up and take a look at these two classic pre-war race cars. Now, here we go. We open it up, and we do actually have both kits separated into two separate bags. We're going to have to look up the history of this kit also. As I don't really know when this was produced. Let's take a look on the box. Nope, nothing. Long Island, New York. Hmm, I'm gonna have to see if we can pay a visit to them. Would you guys like to see what the uh, Atlantis model company looks like? Because I can try and arrange and see if, I, if they will uh, let me come in and take a look. For you guys on the channel. All right, let's take a look at the first one. This is the Alfa Romeo, which of course it is because it's red. And be very careful with this. You saw on one of my last videos. These things hurt. All right, let's take a look at what's in here. Here we have our hood. Uh, the hood grills, uh, not very well engraved, very soft. The hood pins are on there, though. Hmm. So that's a nice little detail. But let's take a look at the body, which is going to be the make it or break it to this kit. Uh, let's see, we have a part that's stuck in here. It's like the nose cone. There it is. And let's take a look at the body. Again, details are a little soft, but they are there. Uh, a couple of pin marks here and here. Going to have to sand those down and clean those up a little bit. Not as much flash as I was expecting. Here we have our engine. There's the detail there. And I'm going to assume our nose cone was right here. Oh, here's our grill work on the nose cone. Nice little detail there. Apparently that's supposed to be, according to the box, it looks like it's chrome. That'll be interesting to try and do. Here we have a bunch of little parts. I have no idea what these are. Okay, so we'll be looking through the instructions for that. Here is the underside of the chassis. It says, I'm not really sure. S M E R. Hmm, not really sure what that is. We'll have to look that up on scale meters and see if they have any info. Here's the front of the engine. Here's our instrument cluster. Leaf springs. There are quite a few parts in here. With our exhaust. Simple. Here's a tree that everything fell off of. Oh, here is. Oh, looks like the spokes for the wheels are untransparent pieces. 
And I'm assuming that's a little windshield in there. We're not going to open that up to keep the... And these are our decals. So we're going to leave those in the bag. We don't want to risk scratching that up. So we at least figure out what they are. Here go our wheels and tires, which are going to require... It's going to be front and rears at different sizes, huh? Hmm, yes, they are. Oh, no, that's interesting. They molded the wheel with one half of the tire and then the other one in there, which does kind of give you a separation between the wheel and the tire, which looks a little more realistic. Nice. The rest of the wheels and tires. Here goes what I'm not really sure what this is. This may be part of the grow work, maybe a radiator assembly. Huh, not really sure what that is. Here's more tires. Oh, now this is interesting. Here's our suspension brakes, which are probably drum brakes for the vintage of the car we have all our linkages here for our suspension nice that's kind of nice let's take a look at what else we have here and here is a much simplified version of the other suspension this has got to be the rear as the linkages are, nothing is exposed in the rear well there we go with that What else do we have here? We have more tires and wheels. And here is our seat. Doesn't look very comfortable, but I guess that wasn't the main deal back then. Quite a bit of flash on it, which is going to have to be cleaned up. That's going to make a nice paintable item. Use the Model Master's leather on here. And a little bit of a wash to give it a little bit of a used look, a little bit of a darkening that's gonna this could actually make a nice little piece i like doing that with the interiors all right that's the entire kit so let's take a look at the instruction sheet it's a very simple kit here we go yeah nice little hobby tips on the side there we have our engine our suspension again very easy and here, okay, the leaf springs are mounted to the suspension there. And then everything just kind of falls right into the body. Top half for the body. Here we have our glass. Oh, that is a radiator assembly. I see. With, I'm not sure what that is. There's our exhaust. And here go our wheels and tires. And those transparent pieces do actually insert into the wheels. Which should make for an interesting look. And... There we go. We have our knockoffs there. The bodies all together. The nose cone. The hood. There we go. Do not cement. Do not cement. Do not cement. So, interesting. Seems like it's going to make a nice little kit. I think I'm going to enjoy building that one. Alright, so let's pop all this back in. And take a look at the next, at the next build. Okay, now we're going to start looking at the Lago Talbot which is very similar to the Alfa Romeo we just saw. These are all pre-war race cars. Oh, now this one's a little bit different as the body comes in two halves. Let's take a look at the detailing on that. Now this one's a little better detailed. As you can see, the louvers a little bit better. And it's also got a little bit of panel work here. About a little bit of rivet detail. This one is definitely 
seems to be better detailed than the Alfa Romeo. Now these are not resets panel lines, they are external panel lines, which with the age, this is a, seems to be a very old kit that maybe was re-released by Atlantis with raised panel lines as opposed to the recessed panel lines. I'm not a fan of that, but that's what it is, you know, back then that's what the, I guess that's what they had to do. We're going to look up on Scalemates and see what the age of this kit is. Here's our exhaust. Very similar to the Alfa Romeo. Here is what I am going to guess is the seat. Very odd looking. But yeah, I'm going to guess that that is the seat. Yep. There it goes, which I don't know if this entire rear area is the seat leather. Maybe this whole panel here, the seat bottom, that I have no idea. These kits are going to require a bit of research. Okay, here we have more. Here's our radiator, steering wheel, parts of the engine. This is a firewall, I'm going to guess. A few more odds and ends here. Here is our nose cone with uh, grill detail. Again, I think that's going to have to be chrome. So that's going to be interesting to do. And that's going to go there. These are. Pretty nice size. Uh, what scale are these? You don't see a scale on the box. Oh, 124th. They are 124th. Okay, that explains it. And again, we have parts falling right off the trees. Again, plastic tires. Let's put that. Here we have our hood, again with the louvers molded into the hood. There's one half of the engine block. Very simple molding, not a lot of detail in there. And here's the other half. And what else do we have left here? Here is part of our suspension. I'm going to guess that this is the front since it has a bit more detail. And as the front is partially exposed, I'm going to guess that that's what, what that is. This I'm going to guess is a rear axle. Here we have our wheels and tires. Not as nice as the what's on the Alfa Romeo, but let's see if we have anything else in here to dress them up. Oh, here we go. Yes, we do. Yeah, here are our decals here. We have gauges, numbers. And here we have our, again, inserts for the uh, spokes of the wheels. And our little windscreen here. Okay. Here we have, again, two different size tires, front to rear. This is a cover of some kind, not really sure where that goes. Here we have a leaf spring hanging out. Oh, oh, I guess that one goes right there with that one. And here we have the smaller wheels and tires. 
and other little odds and ends in here, which this I'm going to assume is part of the dashboard. This has to be part of the engine. Uh, let's take a look at our let's do this. Oh, here's our instrument cluster here. With a few gauges engraved in it. And this is where our windscreen is going to go. And then we have our wheel knockoffs. Right there. So this is going to be an interesting kit to build. Make sure those tiny little parts stay in there. Now, let's just take a look at the instructions really quickly here. Again, very similar to the Alfa Romeo. We assemble our engines. Very simple engine. Radiator. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, look at this. This is a firewall, and they have, oh, actual pedals. The dashboard assembly. Our suspension. And here we have our leaf springs, which... Huh, I guess they're visible. That looks like it's in the rear of the car. Are these? Uh... Hmm, interesting. So you will be able to see some of the components into the car here. So they have provided that where it will be visible. Interesting. Okay, and this is the other side here. Now we'll have our weird seat assembly and the very simplified engine. We'll have to see if we can do something with that. Our wheels and tires. And here is the completed car going together. All the sub-assemblies being bolt bolted together. It looks like it's going to be an interesting kit. It's going to be a lot of fun just getting this to uh, to paint and bring it together one of these old race cars to life. There are quite a few more parts in here than I thought there would be, as I thought these were going to be much simpler kits. And overall, they should make for an interesting experience. So, there we go, guys. These are two very unusual kits. Which... Let's turn the light down a little bit so that you guys can see see these boxes maybe a little bit. I do leave the plastic on them because that's just my little quirk. But these are two very interesting kits which I'm hoping to get to on the channel at some point this year. And uh, hope you guys are going to join in for the ride on building these. As these old classic pre-war cars are just a lot of fun to build. Well guys, I tried researching this on Scalemate. Looking for a little information on the 1928 Mercedes-Benz SSK Pocket Pack Old Timers Build. The only thing I can find is... Let's see. I thought I had something here. Here it is. That these Pocket Pack cars were made by Entex. Entex Industries. And apparently, this is the only one that's listed on Scalemates, which is this uh, <laughs> pretty neat 1896 Peugeot. Otherwise, they have no information on the Mercedes or any of the other pocket pack vehicles. So we can only assume that sometime in the 1970s is when this was released. Which is, uh, I got a little tape attached to that. Which is, um, as close as we're gonna come to any history on this. 
Now, I did search the car. And basically the only thing that comes up with are eBay sites of people selling the, the models. So there's not a lot of information out here about these. Let's take a look here. But they do seem to have quite a few different models in these little pocket pack cars. So I may be picking up a few more. But uh, that's about all that I can find on this. Released by Entex sometime in the 1970s. And they did have uh, quite a few of these small pocket pack models. Okay, so here we have a little info on this one. Let's take a look at the timeline here. So as we see, it was released originally in 1963 for the Lago Talbot. Oh no, actually before that. Here's the original release in the 1950-something, where these cars were originally released. Then in 1963, the Lago Talbot got a new box. This is under Merit. So it looks like this kid has undergone, let me see, where is Atlantis? Here is Atlantis. Okay, Atlantis released it. No, S-M-E-R. Now we know. There we go. S-M-E-R, Rebox, new decals. So this kid dates back to 1963. And the latest releases for Atlantis in 2009. No, that's SMER. Let's go back. Atlantis released it in 2013 in a new box. Which looks like it's based off the original tooling dating back to Merit. from the 1950s. So Merit, 1950, 1963, and then SMER reboxed it with new decals in 1980s and 2009, and then Atlantis got it in 2013. And that is the full history of this kit. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for this video. And I guess I will see you on the next one.